Welcome violinists. This video is meant as a little warm up to get our setup checked, to think about some common finger placements that we need in many of the songs we will be learning this year, and to focus on some bow arm setup. So let's start with making sure your feet are flat on the ground, heels touching. Ideally, when you practice, you remain standing because your posture automatically stays straight. Your spine stays aligned. When you sit, your back should not rest against the back of the chair. Think about using your core, your abdominal muscles and your rib cage to lift your ribs up, shoulders back, neck tall. Hold your violin out, twist and turn. Turn your chin to find the chin rest or the side of your jaw without laying your cheek. Your elbow should be far from your core and ideally you can let go of your instrument when you're in this position. If you can't, you probably have your violin too far forward so it's falling down off your shoulder. Make sure it's all the way on the shoulder itself, like a shelf. Turn that chin and feel the little pinch. Bring your hand around to the neck of the violin without grabbing with the palm. Keep it at rest and let's check our bow setup. Fingers are all nicely spaced apart and tipped over with the weight leaning on the index finger. We're going to play long bows on each string, beginning with E. One, two, down and up. Turn. A down and up. D string and G. So as you pulled each bow, did you feel the elbow extending out straight? And did you maintain the bow contact? in the center of the instrument, or is it tipping sideways like this? We're gonna to try to keep our bow exactly straight in that travel path by stretching and bending the elbow and the wrist. Let's try the same exercise again. One, two. our most common finger placement. The most normal thing we do is play A, B, C sharp, D, and E. That's a zero, a one, right on the sticker. C sharp, two, right on the sharp two sticker. D is a three, right on the third sticker. And E is a four, right on the fourth sticker. You'll notice the two and three are close together and the one and four far apart. Let's start by playing those notes, beginning with A. Check your setup again, lift the ribs, elbow far from your core, palm off the neck of the violin. One, two, A, B, C sharp, D, and E. If all your fingers are still down when you reach for the four, you have a great setup. If you had to take fingers off or angle your hand differently, your original setup needs review. Let's try that one more time. Palm is off, hand is at the ready with knuckles high, not down here. Knuckles above the fingerboard. One, two, A, B, C sharp, D, and E. Let's play the same fingers in reverse. One, two, E. Third finger, D. Second finger, C sharp. First finger, B. And open A. Let's put those notes together into a full scale now. To create a scale, we need eight notes from Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti up to another Do. We're gonna start our scale on open A. 
and we're going to climb A, B, C sharp, and D, just like we just did, A, B, C sharp, and D. But instead of using the fourth finger, I'm just going to go to the next string and begin again on open E. And if I continue my scale, I use the same fingers again. So it's 0, 1, sharp 2, 3, 0, 1, sharp 2, 3. It's a very simple scale pattern, beginning on A. 1, 2. down those same fingers in reverse. So three, two, one, zero, three, two, one, zero. I like to think about it like going up and down a flight of stairs. When you go up to the second floor in your school or hospital or home, you usually go up a few stairs and then you get to a landing and you have to turn and continue going up. So you're at the bottom of the next flight. If I put these two strings together, I'll climb up the A string, turn and continue up the E string. When I come down, I come down the E string, three, two, one, zero, and then down the A string, three, two, one, zero. Let's practice coming down now. Find your high A, third finger. One, two. Second, first. Open E. Now you're at the top of the next set of stairs. Three fingers. C sharp. B. And A. Let's put it together now from the bottom up to the top. One, two. notes on the A string, we talked about the common fingerings being 0, 1, sharp 2, 3, and 4. And they are. But if you're continuing a climbing pattern past a fourth finger, it's really easier to use the open whenever possible. Let's do that same scale one more time with TTs this time. So two bows on each note, trying to stay loose through the elbow and wrist joint. Posture tall, elbow far from your core, ribs up high. T, T, T. T. Come on back. Third finger now. Let's do the whole thing again. One and two, and. But we can do this entire pattern on a different string. Like, what if we start on the G string? 0, 1, sharp 2, 3, 0, 1, sharp 2, 3. To do a G scale then, we would start on open G and climb up the G string and its neighbor, the D string. Let's do TTs on a G scale this time. In a G scale, it's extra important. The left hand knuckles are nice and high and your elbow is supported without hiking the shoulder. So heavy shoulder, lifted elbow. T T, 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 open G, A, sharp two is B, C, open D, E, F sharp, and G, go back, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G, same scale again. 
one. One and two and zero. One. Sharp two. one more way. What if we start on the D string? Well, we'd use the exact same fingers again. Zero, one, sharp two, and three, but on the D string and the A string. Let's do long notes again. Posture tall, relax your bow fingers, no clenching flat fingers, no squeezing palms. One, two, long bows. First finger. this scale with three repeats on each note, but we're going to play a ta and a ti ti. So it will look like this. Just watch. Ta, ti, ti, switch finger. Ta, ti, ti, switch. Ta, ti, ti. Ta will always get the whole bow. Ti, ti will sometimes be only in the very top quarter and sometimes only in the bottom quarter. Starting on the D string, palm off, thumb under and lifted. Shin on. One, two. Ta, ti, ti, 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 ta, ti, ti. a different type of scale. The scale begins on our third finger. We're going to start on a third finger on the G string. If I start on a three, what comes next? If you said four, sure, but if we know we have to continue the scale past more than one note, we might as well go to the next open string. So three, open on the next string. One, and in this scale we're going to have what's called a low two. Low two means your finger doesn't make it all the way to the next stripe, but snuggles or hugs close to your first finger. Your fingers must be on the tips to reach this. If they collapse, you might make it all the way to a sharp two. <laughs> so try to keep your fingers right on their points. So let's review that again. We're starting on the third finger on the G string called C, and after C comes open D. First finger E and F as a low two or an F natural. If I keep going up, I'm going to do it again. Three, open A, one, and low two. So the pattern goes three, zero, one, low two, three, zero, one, low two. Start with three fingers on the G string. Nice slow bows with me. This note is called C. Open D. First finger E. Low two for F natural. Third finger G. Open A. First finger B. And a low two for C. So we started on a C and we ended on a C. In a scale, you always begin and end on the same letter name. Let's try that again. Third finger on the G string. One. Two. C. Turn. Open D. First finger E. Hug 
two, F. Reach for the three, right on the sticker. Open A. Starting on C, one, two, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, go back, one, One last exercise today, just to make sense of some of the chromatic fingerings we see in the Peter theme this year. Chromatic fingerings mean something other than those most common fingers that we've done so far. A one is almost always on the first sticker. A three is pretty much always on the third sticker. We've already seen two variations of the two. A low two, where it feels pinched in close to the first finger, and a sharp two, where you stretched to the second sticker point. But what if we see a sharp three? Where would that go? Sharp just means high. So to play a sharp three, you take what's normally your third finger and slide it up to create a sharp three, like G to G sharp, or on the A string, D to D sharp, stretching it right up. You could also use your pinky in that same spot, like a four or a flat four. Flat means lower in music, so it means making the sound lower or making the number lower on the fretboard. So sometimes you might be asked to play a sharp three in this space and sometimes a flat four. They go in the same space though. It's the space between the third and fourth sticker. So it could be either a high three or a low four. A high three or a low four. Where does flat one go? flat one goes lower than the regular one sticker, closer to the end of the fretboard, closer to a zero, way back, or lower. Let's start on the A string. Play open A. Play a regular one to create the note B. Play open A. Play the regular one B. Sounds happy. Now this time, place your first finger B behind the sticker, down towards the end of the scroll. Play open A. Play a flat one for B flat. Again, open A. Flat one B flat. That sounds sad, right? This time, play a regular B and then a C sharp. So a one and a sharp two. B, regular one. Sharp two for C sharp. Again, B first finger. Sharp two for C sharp. And now let's change it to a one and a low two. B, low two. See how the C sounds sadder, doesn't it? B first finger. Low two for C natural. C sharp. Play a regular three. That's D. Play a C sharp. Play a regular three. D. Now slide the three up closer towards the fourth sticker, but not as high as the fourth sticker. Sounds higher, right? More suspenseful. Play C sharp again. Your sharp two. Stretch to a sharp three. One more time, C sharp. D sharp. Play a 
third finger D, a regular three. Reach your four all the way to the fourth sticker to create the note E. D. E. Third finger D. Fourth finger E. Now this time, play your third finger D and then smush your fourth finger or cuddle that fourth finger in close in that black space to create a flat four. Third finger D. Flat four for E flat. Third finger D. Flat four. Usually in any song or any part of a song, you'll see similar fingerings. Like the whole song will have one sharp two, three, and four. Or the whole song will have one low two, three, and four. Or maybe the whole song will have flat ones and flat fours. It's rare that you have to change so many fingers in one song, but some of our songs this year do have some challenges like that. Keep practicing your fingers, but remember, the answers are on your page. So use the notes that you know how to read and the numbers that are there to assist with the finger placement to help guide you. Take it slow and keep practicing with your videos. See you at your next class.